Hi everyone, this is Dikshit. Welcome to my channel. In this particular video, I'm going to discuss about setting up private registry for Maven using Nexus. But before that, let's discuss about few keywords. The first keyword is artifact. What is an artifact? Artifact is a file that contains both compiled code and the resources that are used to compile them are known as an artifact. And also in other terms, we will say uh, artifact is a readily deployable files. In case of Java, we will say .jar, .var, or .ear file as an artifact. And also in NPM, we will say tar.gz file as an artifact. And in .it, we will say .dll files as an artifact. In case of Docker, we will gonna say Docker image as an artifact. And let's say, for example, you have written your code in um, Java. So you, as a human being, you can understand Java and whatever the language that you have developed your application, you will be able to recognize that language and you will be identify what is the logic, what is the kind of coding that I've done. But uh, application server or a VM where you are deploying your application might not understand that particular code, right? So that's the reason wherein like we need to. So let's say, for example, if we take Java as an example, so then we need to take a tools, build tools like Maven and Gradle. We need to supply our source code to those tools and that tools in turn, it will gonna compile the code and it will gonna give the byte code for this. So this byte code will be able to understood by the machine. So this byte code only we will copy it onto the application servers or like VMs where you want to run the application. And depending on this binary file, we need to have some dependencies and also the resources to run this binary file properly. So that's where like combination of this binary file and the resource are like dependency files, which is put together, we will create one file, which is called as an artifact. And also in a simple terms, if I want to say, this is an output file. If you want to run your application on any VM or a application server. And now we know what is an artifact. Now let's discuss about artifactory. An artifactory is a repository where we can store multiple different versions of an artifact. Let's say, for example, you have a code. So before deploying it in all the industries, like each other project you work for, so they will gonna store the artifacts in some of the repository and then they will, they will deploy that. So whatever the version, let's say, for example, version one of the code is there. Before deploying it, they will store it in the artifactory and then only they will move it to uh, deployment uh, on virtual machine or application server. So let's say they have updated a new feature. So version one has been changed to version two. In that case also, before deploying it onto the uh, virtual machine or like uh, application server, first they will store it in artifactory, then they will deploy it. But now we know what is an artifact and artifactory, but what problem solve that artifactory will gonna solve is what we need to uh, discuss. So let's say, for example, you have version one of the application, okay, wherein like you have deployed successfully and it is up and running. So without any issues, it is up and running. And also now you will get new features to be added and also you got a new requirement. So in this case, what will you do? You will gonna upgrade the code, uh, which version one was there, right? Wherein like you will gonna take this and you will do some changes and you'll create the version two of the application. So now uh, I have deployed this code version two as an app to version in the application server R in a VM, wherein like after the deployment, I figure it out, there is a problem with this version. And now the main problem is like, wherein like I have not stored the first artifact, whatever has been generated out of this code, right? I don't, I am, I don't have stored, I, I don't have any storage or I have not stored that particular artifact. Now I want to roll it back to the version one and then wherein like I want to work on the app two version, wherein like in the version two, there are some bugs, right? I need to work on that. So that's where like, if you don't have an artifactory, so wherein like in that case, what you need to do, if you want to roll it back, so then uh, in the code, in the Git, uh, in the SCM tool, you need to go back to this particular version and then generate the artifact and then deploy it. And then get back these changes and then again create the uh, work on that and create back the artifact too. So this will be a lot of workaround. And also wherein like, um, so rather than developer spending a time on development, so you'll be ending up uh, spending time on these things. But in case of artifactory, when you have an artifactory, right? So whichever the version that you want to deploy it onto the application server, or it can be any VM. So wherein like it will be first stored in the artifactory and then it will be deployed. So in our case also, let's say for example, before uh, putting the version one of the code artifact onto the application server or the VM machine. So you can store it first here and then deploy. And now when we deploy the version two also, we will store the artifact. So let's assume this is version one and this is version two. So now when I deployed this version two of an artifact, 
So it is failing. So in this case, if I want to roll it back, so then I don't need to go back to the code, uh, go back to the certain point of the code and then deploy it. I can just go to Artifactory, download this V1 version of the artifact, and then I can deploy that particular application. So that's where Artifactory plays a very, very important role in any CI-CD pipeline or in development lifecycle. And also now uh, in the Artifactory area, so there are so many tools like JFrog, Nexus, and we have now cloud provided services also like ECR, wherein we can store the Docker images and all. There are, there are so many uh, tools like that. But in this particular video, we will going to discuss about Nexus Artifactory. So Nexus is an Artifactory tool, uh, which is used in DevOps methodology. Mainly it is used for storing the artifacts. So and also in other terms, we can say deployable code. And uh, also why uh, Nexus? There are many reasons why like Nexus can be used and also integrated, ca can be easily integrated with CA CD tools like Jenkins, uh, Circle CI, and also we have GitHub Actions. With that, uh, we can easily integrate it. And also Nexus can support uh, as an artifactory for multiple tools like Maven, Gradle, and also you can use Nexus as an NPM registry also, and you can uh, use to store the Docker images also. And also it can be easily integrated with uh, all the IDs like PyCharm and Visual Studio Code also. And the main advantage is wherein like you can use uh, Nexus as a, a package manager also, wherein like M package manager, app package manager. So those kind of things also you can use the Nexus. And now what we will do is we will gonna take uh, two missions. We will gonna use Nexus as a private registry for Maven. So we're gonna to take two missions. One is for Maven, where Maven is installed. I'm gonna execute Maven uh, commands. And also in the other mission wherein I'm gonna install the Nexus, where I'm gonna keep all the dependencies that my project need, and also whatever the artifact that I'm gonna generate, right? I'm gonna uh, put it under the Nexus so that it can be shared across multiple teams. I've taken two missions, wherein like in one mission I've installed Nexus, in other mission I've installed the Maven, where we will gonna clone our project and we will build the application. And if you don't know how to install Nexus and a Maven, I have a documentation where I've noted down all the instructions to install Java, Maven, and also Nexus. I'm gonna provide this link in the video's description. You can go ahead and check this particular document and you can install it in your missions. And also whatever the projects that I'm gonna use, the repositories I'm gonna use, I'll also give that repos link also in the video's description. You can clone and you can uh, practice along with me. And now, so what we will do, we will go uh, log in into the machine where Maven is installed. We will gonna clone this particular repository and then we will gonna work with it. So this is a machine wherein uh, Maven is installed, uh, wherein like when I type in MVN version, you could be able to see the version 3.6.0 has been installed. And also I've already cloned. You can see I'm already inside Nexus Maven samples. When I do LS, I should be able to see the code. And also main thing is form.xml. So now to generate the artifact out of this particular code, so then I need to execute MVN package or MVN install. So let me execute MVN install. So when I execute this, it'll gonna execute the previous life cycles, wherein like it'll gonna execute MVN validate, MVN test, and uh, many other things it'll gonna execute. And also with that, it'll gonna download a dependencies plugins which are required to run this particular application. And also if you can see here, uh, it is downloading all the dependencies from repo.pavin.apache.org. Uh, but in real time projects, this is not the case, wherein like we won't, it, we won't download it from the public repositories. So instead of that in organization, they'll have their own repository, private repositories. So uh, wherein like uh, already dependencies and uh, plugins, which uh, normally developers uses, wherein like they would have kept all those dependencies there. And then they will ask developers to point uh, their uh, Maven to that particular repository and download it from there. So now we will also see that. So when in like, uh, so let's assume I'm working in a project wherein like internet is completely blocked. When like I don't, I won't be able to download any artifact from the public repositories like repo.maven.apache.org. When in like I want to point to the Nexus, but in my Nexus, those whatever my project requires, those dependencies should be there, right? So then as an administrator, so if I'm there, how do I set up the Nexus repository? And as a developer, how do I point my particular project to download the dependencies from that particular Nexus? We will see that first, what we need to do is first, we need to download these dependencies and then uh, we need to place it under Nexus, right? For that in the Nexus, we have a concept called as proxy repositories. Let me go inside Nexus. 
So let me go into admin module. So when, like if you want to go into that, first thing is you need to log in first. I've already logged in as an admin, you can see here. And then after that, you need to go for admin module. Here, click on repositories. And here you can create the repository. As I said, Nexus can be used as a package manager and also it can be used for multiple language. Uh, you can use a repository for multiple languages like Maven, Docker, and also for NPM. For many languages, you can use it. So right now we are discussing with Maven. So let's create a repository and it will going to ask you what kind of a repository that you need to create. In my case, I want to create something called as Maven 2 proxy. So that means what it does is let me take my whiteboard and let me explain by using this. So let me clear the screen. And now let's say, for example, now what is happening? So I have all the dependencies in Maven ORG, MVN ORG, right? So I have a Nexus. What I need to do is, so I need to download first all the dependencies from uh, public repository to the Nexus and then users, developers, they will be pointing to the Nexus and then whatever the downloaded files which are there, right? I should provide it here. So that's where I can use the proxy, repository type as a proxy uh, in the Nexus. What it does is, so first, whenever user tries to download some particular dependency, right? It will going to check whether it is there in the Nexus or not. If it is there, it will going to provide it to the users. So let's say, for example, it is not there. So then what it does is it basically goes to the public repository and then download download that particular dependency or like whatever the artifact that you have asked and it will gonna once the download download is done it will gonna keep it uh, in the nexus and then it will provide it to the user so now the next time whenever they uh, ask for the same dependency rather than it is going to the public repository and asking it and downloading it it will be cached already that particular uh, dependency will be cached here right it will be supplied from the nexus itself so by this two things wherein like in many of the organizations as i said so uh, they will block internet. In that case, wherein like we are creating kind of a cache and also we are asking user to access Nexus. So in turn, Nexus is going and downloading that particular uh, kind of like uh, dependencies or plugins, whichever is required. So that I can make my project little secure, wherein like internet is blocked. And also I can unblock my developers if they want some kind of dependencies to be downloaded from the internet. The other thing is like if let's assume like your organization is allowing to download it from the uh, internet. So if they're allowing it, so then again, they'll have some proxy settings and all. So what you need to do is, so first the request will go via this proxy. And again, so download that particular uh, uh, dependency uh, via proxy. Only. It might take a lot of time because you are going through the proxy and downloading it. And it's not only that you, you are going to use this particular uh, kind of artifact. So let's assume like there are 10, 15 projects are there wherein even they are using that particular dependency rather than every time going to the internet and downloading it. So if I have something like cache kind of thing, so like Nexus repository in between. So when like once that uh, dependency has been downloaded to my network, it is easily, I can distribute it across multiple teams. So that's where in these two cases, Nexus plays a very, very important role in this particular scenario, right? So now let's go ahead and set up a proxy repository. So here I need to first select Maven to proxy. So here I need to provide the name. Uh, what is the repository name? I'm going to say Nexus proxy repo. So I can give a meaningful name. So in my case, I'm just giving Nexus proxy repo and here uh, as I've selected, uh, this is a proxy, right? You can see here, it is asking for remote stories. So means like it is asking from where, what should be my remote repository. So in this Nexus, you're creating a repository. That's fine. So uh, what is the remote for this? Like if somebody points to this particular repository, from where should I download the dependencies is what you need to mention it here. So for that, what I'll do is I'll go to the logs of uh, my Maven uh, build wherein like I'm going to take this particular repository and I'm going to come here and I'm going to put it here so that what happens is like first it will going to when you point to this particular repository right in the nexus it will going to check whether dependencies are there in this repository or not if it is not there it will go to this repo.maven.apache.org and it will going to download all the dependencies plugins which are required and now other things I'm going to uh, put it as default only you can see other many other options are there and I'm going to click on create repository. And also for this to do it. So what I need to do uh, now I've pointed 
like if you could uh, see here in the logs, it is downloading it from the public repository. Now I've created a repository in the Nexus. Now I want to point this Maven project to download dependencies from the private registry, private repository, which is which we created in the Nexus. If I want to do that, so then what I need to do is I need to uh, update the settings of the Maven. So for this, what I need to do, I need to go to a dot M2 directory. This is the local repository we will say. Under this, I need to create a file called as settings.xml. So let me create that. And in this particular file, we need to do a few settings. But in like, let me take, this is the settings.xml that I need to provide it there. So let me take that. And here, let me put it. And also here I need to update few things. So this is a place uh, which is very important for me. So very like I'll remove this authentication part. So I don't need it. Why? Because across the organization, they should, uh, they should be able to download whatever the artifact they need. So that's the reason I will just going to remove this particular one. And also here, I need to point to the repository which I have created. So if I go back to the Nexus, I have created a Nexus proxy repository. So let me take uh, this value and I'm going to put it there. So now you can see wherein like uh, I've given you and uh, what mirrors, this is a block wherein like if you want to point to the private registry, this is a block that I need to give it in settings.xml and uh, I am referring to the proxy repository which I have created. So first what it will do, it will go and check whether the dependencies which are uh, there in this Nexus proxy repo or not. If it is there, then it will be served from the Nexus itself. If it is not there, so then it will download it from the public repository and then it will be downloaded onto the Nexus and from the Nexus, it will be supplied to me. So now let me save this and now let's go back to our project. And now let me execute MVN, uh, MVN clean install. So, but before that, let me go to Nexus and let's go to the user module and then I'll click on Nexus proxy repo. You can see nothing, no, none of the dependencies which are there right now, it is empty. So now when I do MVN clean install, so let me do MVN clean install. When I do this, you can see now the dependencies will be downloaded from my private registry. You can see which is pointed to, so let it complete. I'll gonna uh, walk you through the uh, these logs again. And also see now uh, without authentication, I could able to download the dependencies. That is why, because I've enabled something called as anonymous access. So here, if you could see, this has been enabled. So that's the reason I could able to download the, those particular dependencies without authentication. I have not authenticated my Nexus uh, repository at all. Without authentication also, I could able to download. When you enable this anonymous access in an organization, the, uh, all the users will be able to view it and also they will be able to download it. But they won't be able to publish or overwrite any, any uh, of the uh, artifacts that you have uploaded. So when like in organizations also, they will give this anonymous access. So that's the reason wherein I could able to download. You can see now everything from this private registry, which is there. Uh, Nexus is my private registry. By using that, I could able to download all the dependencies and the plugin. And now you can see it has built success also. Now let me go to the Nexus, go to the user module, browse. And also when I click on Nexus proxy repo, you can see all the dependencies, everything has been uh, downloaded on to Nexus. Now, whenever uh, somebody points to this particular Nexus, right? So it won't download it from the public repository, which is already downloaded here, right? It will going to be provided from there. So this is a very like, uh, if you want to uh, download a very like uh, the public uh, repository artifact from that, and then put it into the Nexus and then download it onto the developer VMs. So then in this case, you need to create Nexus proxy repository type, and they should use in their missions under the settings.xml. So they should use that mirrors, whatever we have did uh, in the settings.xml, right? So you should be able to do that and then you'll be able to download it from private re repository. And now, so that is fine. If you could see here, now I would have uh, generated target directory. Under this target directory, my output file will be there. You can see here, demo.3.0 release.jar. So now also this application, uh, it has created a jar file. So if you want to check in our application, let's say you have another code. If you want to check what type of uh, artifact it will be created. So when like you can go to the code and you can check com.xml. In this packaging tag will be there. If it is not there, in my case, it is not there. So that means 
it will gonna by default it will gonna create the jar file in your case packaging tag is set to uh, var so then it will gonna create the dot var file so now let's assume this particular jar file whatever i have generated is being used by multiple other teams so now i want to share this jar file so if i want to share this jar file obviously i need to put it uh, into the nexus and then i need to ask the other team members to download it from the nexus if you want to do that so i need to execute mvn deploy so mvn deploy what it does is it will gonna take my whatever the artifact that i've generated so it will gonna push it to the private registry in my case it is a private registry that is where i want to uh, deploy it so before that we need to do some settings first thing is where should i push it i need to have a repository in the nexus so that's where like i should be able to push it and also in the pom.xml so we need to do a few settings which are like uh, we need to have a distribution management section so let me go to that yeah this is the section that you need to have distribution management and also you can see snapshot repository and the actual repository so in the uh, maven we have a concept wherein like uh, a snapshot and the release candidates so whenever the version of the uh, pom.xml if you can see here this is a version right gavs g means group id artifact id and version whenever there is a release in a version or like if there is a snapshot in a version so that means snapshot means it is a, a development uh, artifact so that it has to go to the repository some other dif uh, different repository and also whenever there is a release in it so that means that candidate is valid for to deploy it in a qa or like in a production so those kind of uh, uh, artifacts should go into different repository so that if we do this kind of activities right all the dev, dev development related artifacts to one repository and also production and qa related to another repository so we can maintain the life cycle of the artifact very easily so let's say for example i don't want to keep uh, snapshot versions or a dev related artifacts not more than 30 days so in that case you can uh, apply the life cycle management on your uh, repository where you are storing a dev related artifacts and also you don't want to take that much risk on your uh, repository where you are storing qa and production so there and wherein like you can manage different life cycle for that itself so we are so basically this distribution management if you could see here there are two types of repositories one is snapshot another one is to store the release uh, artifacts as i mentioned snapshot means it is a dev related artifacts and also when i say uh, release repository that will have the artifacts which are related to qa and production environments so why we are doing this if we do, do this we can maintain the life cycle of the artifacts very easy because dev candidates having multi many days on the nexus it doesn't make any sense so that's the reason we can have a life cycles and this uh, dev related artifacts and we can delete it according to that so now what i need to do is first i need to create a two repositories in the nexus one is to uh, store my snapshot versions wherein like those are those we will say development related uh, artifacts and then the other one is for storing my release artifacts okay and also it is simple in your pom.xml if you have a, a version whatever the version that you're going to define right if the version it has a release uh, in it so then uh, it will go to this release uh, repository and also if if it has snapshot so then it will go to the other repository which is snapshot repository we will going to see that like i let me create in the nexus and then you will get a proper idea so let me go back to the nexus so here first thing is let me go to the admin module click on the repositories create repositories again we need to create now hosted repository proxy repository is basically it will be pointed to the external repository wherein like it will going to download if uh the dependencies or whatever the plugins the user has if it is not there it will gonna download it from the uh, public repositories and it will gonna store in the nexus but now i want to publish my artifacts in that case i need to create a repository to host it so that's the reason i need to click on this maven to host it and here it will gonna prompt you to enter the uh, name of the repositories first let me create the release uh, repository you can see here what type of artifact that this uh, repository should store i am telling this particular repository should store only release candidates you can have multiple options here snapshot mixed so if i give mixed right you can store both a snapshot and a release in that but i don't want to do that i want to have a better life cycle i want to manage my qa related production related artifacts in one repository and other uh, dev related artifacts wherein like uh, the code isn't still in a development 
So whatever the artifact that time we create should go under a different repository. In that case, I need to create two repositories is what I have mentioned. So let me create one for release, one for snapshot. So I'm going to name this as Nexus release repository. Release repo. Okay. And now, and also you can see there are many other options. One is deployment uh, policy, disable redeploy. So that means I'm making whatever the artifact which will be uploaded uh, to this particular repository, I'm making that as immutable. So that means no one can override that particular. Okay. So that's why I'm just selecting this disable redeploy. So I also have selected a version uh, policy wherein like release candidate is what this particular one will gonna store. So let me create uh, click on create repository. And also we will create one more repository, which is Nexus snapshot repo. So let me create that also for this also hosted repository only. So let me create Nexus snapshot snapshot repo. And now here I should select version policy and others like what type of artifact this should store. I should give a snapshot and also this snapshot can be kind of like uh, it can be overridden and also uh, kind of like uh, it can be say when I say snapshot. So that particular artifact which is related to dev. So that's the reason I, I should be able to override that right. So in this case I can change this disable redeploy is there right. Hello redeploy is what I can uh, just uh, give it. Okay when I do this and also you can see snapshot is what I have selected here. Let me click on the repository. When I do this, so I have created basically two repositories. One is for release, another one is for snapshot. So now let's take this information, update my pom.xml according to that. So this is a release repository. So let me go to my Maven and uh, let me correct this pom.xml. And now you can see in the place of snapshot, I've given Nexus snapshot repo and in place of uh, release, so uh, uh, repositories, I've given a release repository. And uh, these are the settings that we need to do uh, under the pom.xml, we, we should have distribution management and also other setting also we need to do it. So when, like if you could see here, let me again just edit pom.xml. So you can see I have referred ID Nexus here. Okay. And also we are doing a write operation to the Nexus. Now, when I want to do the write operation, so then I need to authenticate. So my Nexus. So for that, I need to do the changes in settings.xml. For that, let me go to dot m2 under the settings.xml. And here I need to add that uh, one of the block here to uh, authenticate my Nexus. So that's where, so I should provide it in my settings.xml. So this is a block that I need to provide. And username password for my Nexus is admin admin itself. So that's the reason I've given that. And let me, once this is done, so we can say, and then, so now I can execute MVN deploy. Let me do MVN deploy. And before that, let me do a cat on form.xml. Let's see what is the version that I've given you. And now the project is released. So that means this particular artifact, whatever I, whatever I'll generate should go to release repository. So let me do MVN deploy. So when I do that, uh, so let me go back to uh, my repository right now, which is Maven release repository, what it will gonna upload it, right? So it will gonna take few seconds. So now you can see it has been uploaded all, uh, already to the Maven release, sorry, Nexus release repository. So wherein like when I refresh it, I should be able to see that particular artifactory here. You can see a release uh, has been already uploaded. Okay, so now let me do MVN deploy. So now as my release repository is uh, kind of uh, immutable. So when I do MVN deploy again, it should fail basically. It should say that like, no, uh, redeploying won't be allowed. So let's see that. So you can see that uh, it has written the code 400. Why? Because repository doesn't allow updating the assets. So that means, so I've made this particular release uh, or a jar file artifact as a immutable. So once an artifact has been pushed to this particular repository, won't be overridden. So that is what I did. So if you want to uh, create, if you want to push one more, so what you can do is you can just edit this pom.xml, change the version first, and then you will be able to read it. Right? So in my case, let's say, for example, I want to, uh, again, let's assume there were some changes in my code. 
i can make it make the change in this particular version and then again i can execute npm deploy so in this case it will it will going to take couple of seconds and then it will going to uh, push this particular 4.0 artifact onto the nexus and now you can see for the first time it has downloaded all the dependencies and everything right so so that's the reason for the further times like the second time third time and all you can see it is not downloading any dependencies or the plugins why because in the dot m2 directory when i go to dot m2 directory so there will be a folder called as repository okay so when i did mvn clean install first time right from the nexus it has downloaded onto this particular directory we will also say this as a maven local repository so it will gonna so for the second time third time and all right it has taken a very last time to build my project why because the dependencies has been already downloaded so it will gonna take the dependencies from here so maven how it works is first it will gonna check in the local repository if it is there or not if it is not there then only it will go to the remote repository in my case which is nexus it will gonna download it from that particular repository so now let's go back to my project you can see i have published uh, if you could see uh, the logs also i could able to publish it now uh, let me uh, go back and come back to that particular repository again release repo and you can see now uh, 3.0 uh, and also 4.0 two release artifacts are there so now let's uh, push one snapshot also so what i'll do is so let me go back to my pom.xml and then i'll gonna change this release to snapshot So I have changed this and let me store it and also now execute it. Mvn deploy. So now it should go back uh, to the snapshot repository, not to the release repository. So let's go to quickly to snapshot repository. So nothing is there right now. And now once the deploy, this is successful. So now you should be able to see that version also. Now let me go back and snapshot repo. You can see that particular snapshot also here. Okay. And this is how if you want to kind of like upload uh, any of the artifacts uh, to the Nexus. So two settings that you need to do. Uh, one is distribution management. Another one is in settings.xml. You should give the server details to authenticate because we are doing a right operation. It has to be authenticated first. Then only it will be able to publish it. So now that's fine. But in like now uh, two things we have seen, two kinds of repository. One is proxy. The other one is we have seen a hosted one. So proxy means wherein like if I want to directly connect with the remote repository, my organization is not allowing. So that's the reason I've created a proxy repository and I could able to download. Um, I can use Nexus as a cache. So when like it will going to download it from the public repository and from there, I could able to download it. And also if you want to publish any of the artifact, so then I could able to uh, provide a hosted repository, I could able to push it. But now let's assume there is one more thing. So let's assume the team of what I'm working as front-end team. There is one more team, which is a back-end team. So they want to use this particular artifact, whatever you have pushed. So in that case, how, how do they use it? So what mirrors, because like if they want to download anything from the Nexus, they want to refer it in mirrors, right? We know that like uh, uh, they need to mention this particular one, right? In the settings.xml, when I just do cat on settings.xml, let me do empty dot settings dot xml so this is the block they need to refer and when i do uh, uh mirrors when i give in their project if they use mirrors as this uh, nexus uh, proxy repository so the, whatever the artifacts that i've uploaded won't be there under this repository right wherein like they won't be able to download that at all you can see here under uh, proxy repo whatever i have pushed it won't be there it will be under this nexus release repo and nexus snapshot repo so now, see if the other team want to download basically these artifacts as well as they want to download other dependencies also, open source dependencies also. So if they want to download both the things, then what kind of a repository they need to refer? So that's where there is one more repository type which will come into picture in the Nexus. That is a group repository. For that to create, you need to go to repository and you need to click on create repository. Again, you can see here, maven2 group so you need to select this so what it does is it will going to aggregate both your hosted repository and proxy repository so that like users can point to this particular one so that whatever there in the hosted as well as whatever is there in the proxy will be able to download it is kind of like you're grouping multiple 
uh, repositories in a single repository. So the users across the organizations, they can use it. They can download basically internal packages are like external packages by using only single rep. Okay, so let me do that. So let me give uh, Nexus group. I'll just name it as Nexus group repo. And also here you can see uh, all the things you can leave it like that itself. Here I need to select what repositories I need to include it into this group repository. In my case, I need to take Nexus proxy and also Nexus release repo and also Nexus snapshot repo. And now I've selected these repositories, right? These three repositories, whatever, which is there across these three repositories. Eh? I could, I should be able to download it wherever I point to this particular group repository. Okay. So under this, let me save it. So create the repository. So now let me take one more machine because I don't have any multiple developers, right? So that's the reason what I've did is I've created one more machine. So let me verify whether Maven is installed or not. Maven version, you can see it has been already installed. So now what I'll do is I'll gonna clone one more project. Let me do that. So let me go back to the GitHub. Let me clone this particular repository. Git clone Maven examples. Let me go inside this Maven samples. And also under this, let me go to single module. So let me clear the screen. And also here, uh, let me do pi.com.xml. And also here, what I'll do is, I'll gonna refer one of my dependencies that which I have uploaded. So let me go to the dependencies section. Yeah, dependencies section is here. So let me add my dependencies here. So what I'll do, let me go back to Nexus. Uh, user module and also browse and also here I'll click uh, release repo. So let me say that like I want to use this particular one. So I'm going to copy this dependency. This as a dependency, I'm using it in other projects. So let me put it here. You can see dependency. I have kept it here. Indentation, that's fine. Uh, it won't any create any problem. So let me uh, save this one. And also now when we do MVN clean install, so basically, as I'm not did any setting set, uh, uh, settings, right? So that's the reason it will, you can see here, it will gonna download from the public repository, but I don't want to do that. So that's the reason what I need to do is in dot M2, I need to create create a file called as settings.xml. So let me create that settings.xml. And then under this, I need to provide settings.xml. So whatever which is there in the Visual Studio Code, I'm just copying and putting it here. And here now we shouldn't use Maven public. So here in case of uh, uh, here, this one, we shouldn't use proxy also. Basically, I should use that group repository which I have created. Why? Because that group has both my hosted repositories and also proxy repository. So it I should be able to download both uh, both like uh, dependencies, which I want to download it from the public repository as well as internal artifacts also. So that's the reason wherein like I need to give Nexus group repository. So this is the one I need to give it. So let me go back and let me go back to the module, uh, admin module here. Let me select this and also let me take this particular. So when I just let, let me give that particular one here. Also, let me save this. Okay, when I do this, and now when I do MVM clean install, both, it should download public uh, uh, dependencies as well as internal dependencies, which I've referred in my format example, right? That should also be downloaded. So once the execution is complete, we can go to .m2 directory. We can see that whether uh, our internal, whatever the artifact that we have uh, published in the other project, whether it has been downloaded on this machine or not. So now it is successful, build is successful. Let me go to dot M2 and also under this repository here, you can see here. So what is my artifact here? So let me go back to the user module, browse and also release repo here. When I click, I guess I've used the four. So you can see com under the, this com directory, com, uh, because this is how the folder structure will be com and also example in the group ID com dot 
So again, it will be example. Sorry, let me do LS here. You can see example is there. Under that, so when you like, uh, you'll have one more uh, directory with the uh, artifact ID. In my case, it is demo. So let me go to demo. And under this demo, so we'll have release of uh, uh, 4.0. So that's what it is here. So now you can see, we can able to download both public uh, dependencies as well as I could able to download uh, my internal dependencies also. So this is how if you want to kind of like set up a private registry for an access by using combination of proxy group hosted repositories in the nexus, you can set up a private registry. And also by this, many things that you could able to avoid wherein like users who want to uh, access the public repositories directly, you can avoid it. So in your, many organizations will try to stop that particular one. So that's where Nexus will gonna act as a cache. You can download it and then provide it to the user. And also let's say for example, one project has developed some jar file. It has to be distributed across the uh, organization. So then also they can publish it. And by using a concept called as a group repositories in Nexus, you can share that particular uh, artifact across the old teams. And this is what I want to discuss in this particular video. If you have liked the video, please like, share and subscribe. So it will encourage me to do uh, many more videos. Thank you. Have a good day.